Hello there. Let me try to explain the timer A of MSP430. Timer A, as you can see in the block diagram over here, have got two sections, upper and the lower section. What would a timer do? In MSP430, it has got uh, three functions to perform. One as a regular timer to count the pulses and to create an interval. The other one is to compare the value that is uh, provided in one of the register with the uh, uh, timer register. Once it becomes equal, generate an interrupt. The other one is capture. As you can see, there are four signals here which will trigger uh, upon the triggering whatever the value that was counted up in the timer register is copied to the timer A com capture compare register. So there are three functions uh, which are performed by timer A as I told you already to count the pulses out of the four uh, uh, inputs of sources of clock pulses here and also to capture from the four uh, input triggering here and to uh, do the comparing of the values uh, between this register that is capture compare register with the timer A register. So these are the three functions. Let us go to the details of timer A. Timer has got uh, the timer block as I told you already in the upper half. It has got uh, three important uh, units there. That is TAR. This TAR is actually the register which is going to count uh, the pulses. And you have got a divider here which is actually the clock divider as you can find here. It can be divided by 1, divided by 2, divided by 4, divided by 8 like that to reduce the frequency of the uh, clock input. And you have got uh, TAIFG that is timer A interrupt flag. What it does is on the event of completion of a count, then the interrupt is generated by the timer A register. So likewise, we have got uh, the upper section which is called as the timer block. Then coming to the lower section, that is the second half of the section, it is called as capture compare. As I told you, capture is to copy the value from TAR to TACCR uh, whenever uh, the triggering happens in these four inputs. Compare is to compare the value which is already stored in uh, timer A capture compare register with the incremented value of the timer A register. Once the timer A register increments to a value equal to the timer A capture compare register, then the comparator will find it out. So what are the units related to the capture compare uh, uh, the lower section of the timer A? It has got TACCR, uh, what I told you, that is timer A capture compare register upon uh, uh, when it becomes equal to the value of TAR, whatever the value that is stored in TACCR1 by the user is e becomes equal to the uh, counted value in the timer A register, then it becomes a comparison being equal. Otherwise, whenever you trigger from these four uh, inputs, then the TAR value will be copied to the timer A capture compare registers. So, timer A capture compare registers not necessarily be one, it can be multiple also. So, you have got comparator here, what you find in the block diagram, which will compare the uh, counting value of timer A register with the a stored value that is there in the timer A capture compare register. Then there is an output mode which is available here. Um, due to the output mode, you can generate the pulse width modulation uh, based on the uh, value that is stored in the timer A capture compare register. Whenever it uh, becomes equal, you can generate a pulse width modulation. The width of the pulse that is generated will be equal to the value that is already stored in the timer A capture compare register. That is what the output mode is. Then coming to the capture mode, whenever 
out of the four inputs here the triggering take place then the tar value will be copied to the timer a capture compare register and upon which you are going to have an interrupt being generated so you have got a ccifg capture compare in, in, uh, interrupt flag so you have got two uh, interrupt flags actually one is uh, timer a interrupt flag the other one is capture compare uh, in interrupt flag so here once again uh, you have got a cci uh, if at all uh, when the triggering takes place here then the value that is uh, uh, counted here will be copied i said to the timer capture compare register which may sometimes lead to the race around that means for uh, without, within a, a span of uh, duration of clock pulse two values might be uh, taken into consideration so to avoid this we take the sample from the triggering input to the uh, SCCI. So this will enable the avoiding of multiple capturing of the values at the duration of a triggering pulse. So this is the block diagram of time array and uh, related units here. Then you have got a control register by entering the values into this register you can value you can uh, program the time array in the way you want it has got upper byte and lower byte that means it has got a 16 bit register so let us see what is there in the upper byte in the upper byte only bit 8 and bit 9 are used which are called as time array source selection bit whereas 10 to 15 that is uh, about uh, 6 uh, bits are not used yet uh, it is left unused let us see what are all the combinations of these two bits to select the different clock source. So if the combination were to be 0, 0, then timer A clock is selected at the input of the clock source. Then if it is 0, 1, then auxiliary clock is selected. If it is 1, 0, then submaster clock is a sub uh, system master clock which will be in the range of megahertz is selected and if it is 1 1 then external clock like the first one is selected for the clock source then what is there in the lower byte let us see you have got different clock intervals as you have already seen in the block diagram uh, that uh, you can divide the clock uh, in different intervals that is selected out of the two bits uh, those are called as idx here so you have got different division values here mcx will make uh, different modes of operation suppose if you have uh, put 0 0 in these two bits of mcx then the timer is halted if it is 0 1 then the timer counts up to the value that is stored in the timer a capture compare register and then stops if it is 1 0 then the counter will st will uh, count up to the maximum value that is fffff if you have put 1 1 in mcx then it will count up to the value of uh, timer a capture compare register then counts down so it is like a ramp up and a ramp down that takes place with this combination in the mcx then there is one bit which is unused then timer a clear if you have put 0 the timer a register is going to be cleared otherwise it won't be cleared then timer A interrupt enable if you make 0 then the interrupts are disabled from the timer A if you make 1 interrupts are available likewise if uh, this bit is 0 no interrupts have been raised if there is 1 then the interrupt uh, request is pending is what we understand from the timer A control register which is 16 bit so uh, coming to the timer a capture compare register as we have already uh, know uh, that there are two uh, separate sections in the timer a sections we have seen already in the capture compare section uh, what would uh, the capture compare control register will be able to provide us let us get to see so if it is 0, 0 it won't capture if it is 0, 1 it will capture when the triggering signal is rising if it is 1, 0 then the capture will take place in the falling edge if it is 1, 1 then both uh, rising and uh, falling uh, 
pulse have to be there as a triggering pulse to capture. Like that, uh, there are four triggering sources for capture which we have seen in the block diagram, so which can be selected by different combinations here. Then in order to synchronize, uh, to avoid race around, we have got uh, this bit. If it is zero, uh, we are not using synchronous. If it is made one, then we are using synchronous to avoid race around. Then if it is zero, compare mode. If it is one, capture mode. So there are two modes of operations as we have already learned. So that can be selected here. Then coming to the timer A, uh, capture compare upper byte. We have seen previously lower byte. Let us see the upper byte. So output mode, that is what uh, we get uh, from the output of comparator. Uh, we have got uh, several possibilities here. If it is 0, 0, it will be same as the output out bit value. That is that bit uh, which is there will be, uh, this bit will be as it is taken at the output. If it is 0, 0, 1, it will set on the uh, compared value. That is when the comparison takes place, the output will be set. Like that, if it is 0, 1, 0, toggle or reset, 1, 1 means set or reset. Like that, different output modes are obtained by having three bits combination here. Like that, CCIE, interrupt can be enabled or disabled with respect to the capture compare. Like that, CCI, is it compare mode or capture mode can be once again uh, selected from this particular bit. Then, uh, this bit can be either 0 or 1. If it is uh, 0 in the compare mode, it is 1 in the capture mode. Like that, capture overflow. If it is 0, there is no capture overflow. If there is 1, then there is a capture overflow. Like that, uh, capture compare interrupt flag condition is uh, reflected in this bit. Then now, uh, coming to the last uh, register which is again 16 bit register here all other bits are unused except for 1 2 3 3 bits so it will represent uh, the interrupt source among the various interrupt sources that are available such as for the capture compare one uh, capture compare interrupt flag like that for different uh, uh, capture compare and uh, for the timer whichever is the uh, interrupt source that is measured between 1, 2, 3 bits of the TAIV. So this is about uh, the uh, block diagram and uh, uh, features of uh, timer A. Now let us see where are all uh, uh, timer A is employed. The applications of timer A, it is used to measure the time. How is it uh, used to measure the time? It is used to measure the time by uh, measuring the duration uh, of the pulse that is given with the elapse of the time. Then measurement of frequency is possible. Then generation of periodic signal in the output mode we can uh, obtain this. And then pulse width modulation that means width of the modulation, uh, width of the pulse will depend upon the uh, information uh, or the message that is provided. So this is about uh, the timer A. Thank you so much.